NFL Week 15 Recap, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books down there in Tunica. Go check them out over at tunicatravel.com. Now, we will go ahead and preface this. We are going to be flying through this stuff tonight. I got to leave for Chicago here in a few hours. Uh, Chris has still got work to do in, in the, the personal business. So, uh, so we're going to fly through this, but we are going to try and get in as much as humanly possible. If there are things that you feel like we probably should have talked about, leave it in the comments below. We, uh, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Let's start off with Thursday night. Chargers and Chiefs. Big, big game. Massive game. The Chargers win 29-28 to on basically, essentially, a walk-off two-point conversion. Without their two best offensive players, not named Phillip Rivers? Uh, Gordon and Allen? Come on, man. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if Mike Williams is just, like, underutilized. Oh, well, he wasn't that night. But, <laughs> all right. That's I, what I'm saying. I, now, I think listen, you, I, think I love Mike Williams. I like, oh, I like Mike Williams. Love Mike Williams, even. Man, I, I could. Cream Allen is. Oh, no, Keenan Allen's incredible. Keenan Allen, sorry. And then Melvin Gordon is a top three, top four running back in all the NFL. That cannot be yeah. disputed right now. What he has done no, the I mean, last couple right. of years. You're right. I mean, that that's pretty amazing. I think Justin Jackson's pretty good. Like, and I think. Well, when, yeah, but in, I mean, he's. That's our guy because Northwestern, but man, he's, he's, he's still just a. Yeah, he's. he's late fresh. round flyer. Young yeah. legs. No, you're right. You're I right. like. I do like the way he runs, but he's no Melvin Gordon. So this game was massive. Oh yes. But when it comes down to it, if the Chiefs went out, they still got the tiebreaker. So why would they have the tiebreaker? Well, because they have a better division record and a better conference record. How do they have a better? Oh, because the Chargers lost to the Broncos, to the, Broncos. the other night. Yeah, and they lost to the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs, well, yeah. and, they're so, one. And, they're one and one. So, so the the Chargers man, need the Chiefs Broncos. to lose to the Seahawks. Yep, uh, because the Chiefs are not going to lose to the Raiders to end the season. Oh no, that, no. that, that um, just will not happen. And the Chargers still have to beat the Ravens at home, and then who do they have to end the season? Do you remember? Um, nope, I don't remember off the top of my head. I can um, get that. Just but it's somebody that they're supposed to beat. It's and I I don't know who it is, but. Well, they were um, supposed to beat the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, they're supposed to beat the uh, the Ravens, too. It's the Broncos at it's, Denver, so yeah, imagine that. No, they could they could easily lose both those games. But. Yeah. Um, so if both teams went out, Chiefs and Chargers, then the Chiefs have the number one slot, and the Chargers will be in the five slot. And it looks like, just guessing, that they would have to go and play at Pittsburgh, where they've already won this year. But Pittsburgh gets the – should they just do away with – Division, I mean, like division no, champions get in, nope. but but should I, they like keep the seating? Or I'm, like, I'm okay with winning. I think winning your division needs to matter. I, I know every year, yeah, I've but like gone not back every division is created equal. Nope, so like you're right. If if you're, somebody's going to win the AF, the NFC East this year at eight and eight, I mean, listen, Cowboys, well, look, are, eight the Cowboys are eight and six listen, right don't, now. Don't they, just go ahead and pencil in those two W's. You do that. <laughs> you do that, and I'm going to hang on to my eight and a half under. With all I have, and we'll see what happens. Okay, okay, I'm with you. Um, so, yeah, not every division is created equal, and I wonder if maybe they should, like, it, all the division winners should get in, but, like, maybe the seeding should be done differently. I, I would agree with that on a normal – I guess I agree. I, look, I really don't care. I don't really get up in arms about the home field advantage – who gets any of that stuff? Well, because we all know what the rules are, and everybody understands what it takes. That's like, right. And, if you're I, and the Chargers, I think it's kind of don't lose at home to, to the Broncos. Itself. That's it. I was just about to say, you don't lose to the Broncos, and you win this thing. Yeah, like you got to be penalized for losing to this Broncos team. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. All right, jump off that. Let's talk about Derrick Henry real quick. Man, the Titans, like just just man, like he's a man. Yeah, he he absolutely is. Uh, the Titans are just. It, rolling people right now. The, the offense looks good. I think they're that, playing exactly the way we think of Titans football. Well, Just Matt LaFleur finally decided because they, they didn't know what they were doing early in the season. The offensive line didn't know how to block in the scheme. Like, and and LaFleur just kind of went back and said, okay, what is this bunch good? Like, what did they draft for initially? Oh, that all right? Well, hell, let's do that. Let's just let's just run the football. Yeah, because it's I, I know Henry is getting all the love. Look, Lewis had a huge game. Also, they're just gonna say we're gonna run the rock. 
and, and, and this is probably what you need to do because I we've seen flashes of Mariota being great. Did you see Mariota throw that block on Oak but, Tree? But, but, which that's Ooh. just ridiculous. He needs Ooh. to not do that. No, I agree. That guy is it's... a walking tube of being gay. I mean, he's <laughs> he's about five minutes away from being Sam Bradford right now, just with about mm-hmm. a, you know maybe a fourth of the paycheck that Sam Bradford made. But but he's. That Would guy it not be the is, most Titans thing in the world if he got hurt in like the last game against the Colts and they still won some, those two games? Throwing some weird block, too. Like doing yeah, something, something that you just goofy. have no reason to do. Like up by two touchdowns already, yeah. and then you get in the playoffs. You and throw you, a and pick, you don't have and him. all of a sudden you're going to try to make a tackle when you get leveled. Like something crazy. <laughs> just like, just go. Just and the Titans have to start Blaine Gabbert in the but, playoffs. <laughs> But I think with this off, well, I, okay, I disagree. I was just about to say with this offense, it might not matter who's quarterbacking it. Oh, it but, still matters. But because Mariota has the threat with the legs, he's so mobile. Yeah. Um, and, and he can make plays when he needs to make plays. Sometimes he he's got that threat. Yeah. I, I think you need Mariota to run this offense. I kind of think if they want to get to that next level, when Mariota's contracts up, his rookie, they need to be start looking for another quarterback. You can't you can't make him. A ninety million dollar offer, and and hit, let him be your franchise. I, I think you know cheap, how much I love Mariota. I, I can't comment cheap, on it. But cheap quarterbacks are the way of the future, and yeah. I don't know that I'd pay any quarterback right now. The six top paid quarterbacks in the NFL, there is a really good chance after this week, not only one of them is alive in the playoffs. That's Kirk Cousins, and and after this weekend, if the he, Vikings lose at the Lions, they he, they may he be. might be out of the playoffs. That means. All top six paid highest paying quarterbacks are not going to make the playoffs. That tells you something. This yep. is not how you build a team championship team. This is not how you build a, 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 a major winning team. Now you and look you, at all right. of them. All you either got guys like Tom that say I'm going to take a less a lot less money, and restructure my deal to always make the team better, or they're all first year contract guys, rookie contract guys. It's it's entirely possible. Um, Derrick Henry broke Earl Campbell's. Uh, franchise record. Uh, Earl Campbell ran for 405 yards in two games back in like what 78, I think it was. I have no idea before our time. And Derrick Henry has 408 yards rushing the last two weeks with six touchdowns. He has been all of their offense. It's it's just uncanny uh, what he's doing right now. It's it's crazy. Let's let's move from them onto the Pats and the Steelers. We didn't even talk about the fact that. They beat the Giants 17 to nothing, and this is a Giants team that was rolling. Well, they're putting up they, points and bunches, man, but this yeah. Titans defense is – we've talked about this all year. Yeah. They bring people down in the mud. They're going to get this dirty in with the mud you. literally because the, oh, the, the, the rain was awesome. Yeah. It was fun to watch. I will tell you, bad weather, this Titans team is going to be a really good bad weather team. Oh, yeah. If they go outdoors in the playoff game, they don't want to go into a dome situation. Nope. They don't want to go into a warm weather situation – they want to go up north somewhere if they make the playoffs. Looking like going play, to the Airhead last play, year. Yeah, play in the snow, play play in the nasty. Um, that that's this that's how this team is built. You got that right. Uh, let's talk go about the Pats. To, yeah, we don't uh, have to if you don't. The want Pats to. and the Steelers. Uh, the Pats needed this one. They they still have a shot at the number two seed. They still technically have a shot at the number one seed. You need a whole yeah, lot of stuff to go right. But there. Um, but it, it's still a shot at the number two seed. You want like the Pats have not gone to a Super Bowl where they did not host all the way through, but they've only not hosted like four times, <laughs> which means they've been to the Super Bowl every other time. Which yeah. is crazy. well, no, they've just always hosted. I mean, when they yeah. you know they've they've not made it when they've hosted as well. I mean, they've they've been to the Super Bowl what nine times? They've under, been to nine Super Bowls under under Belichick. That's Brady. crazy. Um, Steelers needed this one. I mean, the Steelers they were needed it slide. more than the Pats did, to be honest. Because the Steelers lose, they don't make the playoffs. Oh, this was this was as intense a game as I can remember for a regular season game in a long time. Even more intense than Chargers Chiefs. Like oh, it, I it think was so. well, both of those teams were in the playoffs. This the Steelers lose that game. I, they don't make the playoffs. Yeah. The Ra- the Ravens take over that division. And I don't think the Ravens, even if the Ravens lose to the Chargers, I don't think they give it up. No, I think you're right. I think you're right because the Steelers have to go play the Saints this week. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, that was uh, that was a big, big game. Uh, neither team could score. A lot of weird calls. Brady not being able to execute really 
in a lot of weird spots, uh, like stuff that he normally does right. Like, is it is it near the end of? Well, okay, Father Tom catches up to all of us, and when it yeah, hits, he's, it that's the only person quickly. that's undefeated. But you also got to remember. I mean, I watched every snap of this game, like all Pat's games. The the one thing I do remember watching is is there are six or seven major drop balls where he hits guys in the oh hands. absolutely on that. when that begins to happen I think Edelman you as a started dropping stuff in, in drunk, so, like so this drunk. is this is the problem with the Pats team and this is what scares me about this team is if Brady comes back next this team is not going to look the way it looks now. Gronk is a complete shell of himself physically he cannot separate and he cannot go up for jump balls anymore. He just isn't physically capable of doing it. Julian Edelman coming off the uh, the ACL injury, getting a year older, he cannot separate. Every catch he has to make is a trash catch yeah. because he can't get open. He's never open. D- Tom can't throw him open because he can't separate from anybody. Now, he can still make great catches, and he has, but he made some drops too, and I think that's just a part of not being good. Um when he got open, Tom hit him like a laser. Tom hit Hogan like a laser when he was open. But these guys are not great offensively, and they weren't able to run the ball. White, even his security blanket of all security blankets, White dropping footballs. Yeah, I think that gets in your head, even as a 41, 42-year-old quarterback, saying, I got to do something miraculous because the guys that I lean on aren't helping me at all and then he begins to overthrow, and he begins to do too much. And, and, and he overthinks situations like the, that's right. the interception that's when right. they're down there near the oh, goal Oh, he was line. just frustrated. I mean, he even said after the game, like, that's on me. Like, I've never made that throw before. I'm just pissed off, and I'm getting taken down, and I just chunked the ball. Yeah. I'm just I'm just mad. Trying to throw it away, but that's he, right. like, didn't I mean, have enough on it. He's yeah. getting pulled down, and, and he doesn't have the arm strength he used to. I think I do think the end is coming. It would not surprise me if he doesn't come back next year. Um, but even if he does, I think this team is going to look drastically different. Bill, remember this: Bill Belichick is still a G. Now he's trying to do things he doesn't normally do. He's making mistakes, but I think it's because he's trying to force stuff. He tried to trade Gronk before the season started. Oh, and yeah. everybody was like, "What are you doing, man? You can't trade this guy." And now we're all looking, thinking, "That's yeah, probably a smart Bill, deal." Bill probably needed to try to stick to his guns here. Well, it, it wasn't Bill's fault, though. Remember, no, Gronk, Gronk was Gronk, that's what I'm saying. He threatened but, to retire. That's it, though. But had had Bill say either retire or I'm trading you, either way, you're not playing for us. You free up all that cap money. You go get somebody else. You fill the spot. And, and I hate saying that because I, I love Gronk. If I could be one guy for one day of my life and then turn back into myself, it would be Gronk. Like I, I could, couldn't I could live a that. life that way. And at, at at the age I am now and the way I'm thinking. I don't even know that I could handle like a weekend being Gronk, but give like me one day. Give me one like eighteen hour day. Um, and that's that's good, what, dude, good to roll. But I could, I, th- I think I think the end is for Gronk. I think the end is for Jules, and uh, this team is going to look D- way drastically different. Next different. Year. Um, let's move over to Philly and the Rams. Philly beats uh, Nick Foles. beats the Rams thirty to twenty three. Well, that's that was my question. I want to I want to have the Eagles been playing the wrong quarterback the entire hang on, season. Hang on. I'm gonna get a little chesty here because you know this, all right. When I'm when I'm wrong, I'm big wrong, and I'm and I'm okay with that because when I'm right, I'm I'm big right. And before the confetti hit the ground in the Super Bowl, what was I telling you? And you were immediately shouting that they need to trade trade Wentz. You could get two first round picks for Carson Wentz last year before the confetti hit the ground. You got a Super Bowl MVP. And as soon as Carson Wentz faces adversity, the city of Philadelphia is going to say the NFL MVP Super Bowl champ is sitting on the bench right now. What are we doing with this guy? And now we got Wentz not being able to win. Now he's got, he's hurt, but he, I don't know that he was hurt all those games they were losing. Okay, he he might have got hurt this past game, but I don't know if he got hurt I, all I'll those games. I'll tell you games. this: the the defense looked insanely better in think, this game. I think that's because they but believe want, the offense could do something. They actually had confidence that you know what we can we can take a chance and make plays because we know our offense will pick us up if we make a mistake. Yeah, and that's and that's I, really I, what it felt like. I think like. there's some swagger there. Nick Foles leads that team. Yeah, and look, I don't know that he's great. I'm not saying he's a second coming. I'm going to tell you this. He's a leader on that team. The 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 skins and and Houston play those two play those guys. If they sneak into the playoffs, I I, I can't tell. There's some weird juju going on with that guy. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, Bill Simmons says Foles has God on his side, and, and that's <laughs> listen. I, I don't I don't want to mess with that. But what that guy did last year in the playoffs is something I've never seen in all of my years of watching football. Yeah. And and if and if he makes that run again, y'all just everybody buckle the seatbelts, hold okay. everything down. But now let's let's play the devil's advocate here. Let's say Foles makes this run again, and that all happens. What do you think you could even get for wins right now? Because I don't. Nobody's giving them two ones. No, it wouldn't be two ones. I, I think you still get some, a first. Probably you could probably still get a first from some teams. Would like the Raiders say we've got like five no, first round picks? We'll give them one. No, because like Derek Carr has been pretty awesome. I know, like, but for some 12 reason, touchdowns, I, I feel zero like, interceptions, I feel over a hundred like passer rating. Doesn't like Carr. At, he might not, but I, I I wouldn't look at that. I'd look at Jacksonville. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, they yeah. got nothing. And if I'm the they'd, Redskins, they'd like, give up two. They'd give up two. Well, the Skins because that's division. Uh yeah, they probably wouldn't give them give them to the Skins. But I could Jackson, see Jacksonville. Jacksonville might give them two. It's entirely possible. If I'm Tom Coughlin, yeah, I think I'd probably do that. Would but you no. trade? Would you trade Ramsey in a one? Right now, as bad as Ramsey has ran that yak and, and probably got y'all in a lot yeah, of trouble probably. with your Jacksonville. I would. I instead of two ones. You take Ramsey in a one because somebody's going to, have to pay Ramsey soon. So, well, and yeah. then and that that way the the money kind of yeah kind of makes a little more sense. It's not so much of a burden on either one. I think that'd be all right. If I was if I was Philly, I'd be on the phone right now with Jacksonville saying we'll make that deal tomorrow. I don't think technically I don't think they can. Right? Whatever, figure hey, it wait, out. Wait, as soon as the deal comes, as soon as the time comes, as soon as as soon as both of them are mathematically eliminated, can you do it then? Well, no, it's not even that. I think it's uh, I think it's. Wentz's injury oh, that proves that. that he's. I, guess what? When when they get ready to trade him, he'll miraculously get better. Yeah, you're probably right. Because I got a uh, philosophy about that. Speaking of God being on somebody's side, Khalil Mack, the Bears are unreal right now. That you, defense. Did you see the sack? Like the back sack. Yeah, I was about to say when he hit him from when he hit him yes, with his back and just took him down. Just ridiculous. Like that. That was a fun game to watch. I, you. I, you know how I feel about the Bears this year. Oh, and, I know. And, and it's and it's strictly the Bruise brothers. It's trick. It's strictly that I was just so big on Roquan, and I that when they got Mac, it was it was oh, like it's just, that. That instantly became my Vikings of last year. Who I just love watching this team. I knew I was going to watch every snap of Bears games when Mac went there because that guy's just a he is a monster. He plays football the way I I like. Defensive line football play, edge rushing football play, linebackers just wrecking people's lives and watching watching them beat the Packers just since, warms my heart. Since we're talking about the uh, the NFC North, um, I don't have this listed, but while we're on it, the Vikings they fired John DeFilippo, the offense coordinator. They wanted to get back to running the football. They wanted to focus on that. Easiest money I've ever made in my life. Dalvin Cook, they they hung up 41 points on the Dolphins. And I understand he, the Dolphins are bad on the road. I got that. But, but, yeah. but they still hung 41 points. E- easiest money I've ever made and in my life. Just don't even worry about the gambling. Look at it from the offensive side where, I mean, Dalvin Cook, like, ran all over the Dolphins. My, Mike Zimmer said, we're going to get back to running the football. And it yeah. didn't matter if Cook was running it or or Murray was. It didn't matter. They just we're going to run the football. We're going to run it forty something times. Yeah, quit the quit the crazy plays. And that's going to op- that. and that's going to open the offense. And guess what? Well, it, it did. It opens the offense, but it also helps the defense. The oh, defense yeah. looked insanely better because they're not on the field as much because it's not three passes and out. It's just so much. Smarter. It was yeah. It was so much better. If you can run the ball, I, me and you, we're. I don't. We I got love a shirt watching for the sale that yes. says, uh, I, I, run the ball, look, stop the look, run. I, I That's love, how you win. I love the Chiefs, and watching them play football is kind of impressive. To Not kind of. It's it's really impressive, and it's entertaining. But I don't know that I'm ever going to change this old man mentality of run the football, stop the run. You control the game. Yeah. Even if I can't score as much as you, I can still beat you. How do I do that mathematically? I keep you on the sidelines. I control the game. I score on every possession because my defense is – healthy and and off the field a lot I, I can make you make a mistake one time two times and then the ball game's over yeah I just I just believe that's still how you win championships and and it wouldn't surprise me if it's gonna be one of these types of teams to go on the playoff run 
to win it and it not be the Chiefs, and not be the Saints, and not be the Rams, because we're seeing their offenses at the end of the year kind of starting to starting slow to down. Yeah, I mean, the, the scoring was way down this week. We had, like, what, three shutouts? Yeah, it was nuts. I mean, you know. Speaking it, of a shutout, let's go okay. and swap over to that. Indian Dallas. Indianapolis 23, Dallas nothing. Now, look, the game didn't mean a whole lot to the Cowboys. We got that. But for all you Cowboys fans that were on the Twitter or on the uh, the, the YouTube comment section on the, the last thing on our picks column. Jason Garrett, I know and love. It's, uh, y'all wanted to, to bash Chris that's, on his that's pick. The, that's the Jason Garrett I know and love. This uh, it, Look, I'll tell you this. That was an ugly, ugly game. They Oh, well, it was ugly one way. It the was other team, ugly one the other team, that defense that had shut everybody down, they, Could weren't, not, yeah, they, they weren't shutting down. Now, the other side of this is like Andrew Luck wasn't great. No, they were running the football. Yeah. But I will tell you this. Marlon Mack went off. I think the problem that the Saints had, and I think the problem that the Eagles had, nobody's trying to run the football on the Cowboys because they see that defensive front. I think that defensive front can stop the pass. They can rush. Yeah. But there's a big difference between pass rush and stopping the run. No, you're right. And and I think we saw a Colts team that hadn't ran the ball really well all year said, I think we can run on these guys. And you know what? You can run on them. Oh, yeah. And they did. They ran it right down their throat. Well, remember, who who's the guy that, that works for Indianapolis now that came from Dallas last year? Oh, I would have I would I would not be able to close to that's that. I, I don't remember his name, but it but they did have somebody that that knew the scheme that understood. Well, that and, might be the scheme for stopping them offense uh, defensively, but but being able to run on them, this is what the Saints should have done with Ingram well, it was it was a defensive Alvin. analyst that that or not analyst but defensive yeah. assistant that that knew like those guys. Oh yeah, yeah like that's knew probably, like yeah. hey yo they look menacing and all that, but. When they but are, we can, they we can, can look, run on them. They can pass rush with the best of them. They really are one of the best pass rushing teams we've watched all year. It doesn't matter if you can't stop the run, and and, and if and if the, they play the Saints again, I'm going to tell you, Sean Payton watched that game, and he's going to say they're going to be it, a whole lot of Alvin a, and Ingram, yeah. right through the guards, Believe right that. between the tackles. None of this outside edge stuff. Because the Cowboys have linebackers that are crazy fast and super athletic, and they hit hard, and they are great tacklers. And now you brought up the Saints. Let's move on to that. Saints and Panthers. Oh, my Monday gosh. Night Football, 12-9. to 9, 12 the hard way, the, 9 the hard Like, this is the weirdest yeah. 12-9 game I've ever it, watched this was in my not, life. This was not, you know, seven field goals. Nope. This was nope. uh, two field goals, a touchdown, and a, a pick two. A pick two, and then a, a touchdown and a pick two. And the touchdown was – a throw by Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Like, it was – this was just a we've, – We've got halfback pass. We've got all kinds of craziness in this This was game. a crazy ball game. Um, but the Saints did come out with the win. They didn't cover, but uh, but we actually didn't bet them this past nah, week. I, 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 I didn't know what he had them. Going either. on the road, I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't feeling great about it because I, I didn't think the game was super important for them. But um, – yeah, that was that was a good ball game to watch. Uh, let's jump off of that. Let's uh, let's talk about Baker Mania. Baker Mayfield, seventeen to sixteen win at Denver. Woke up feeling dangerous. Whoo! You seen the dangerous shirts? That guy. I, like I'm with gonna the say six this. for the G. And like the... he's he is a mar- he's a marketing genius. That guy. It, you know what I do like about Baker it, that I kind of didn't like in college. I, I, I like that he. He seems to be very comfortable in his own skin. He'll do the things that we all look at and say, oh, you're supposed to be better than that. You're a quarterback. Be a professional. But you know what? Man, screw that. Do what makes you happy. Yeah, just do you. Be you. But don't be fake. Don't be fake, primp and proper, suit and tie, all the right answers if that's not you. Now, some of those people, that is, like that is Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is the most gentlemanly person Have in the Have you seen the, in the, the Twitter NFL. feed that's like the, the yeah, captain Andrew yeah, Luck? Yeah, that's, that's great. That thing cracks me but, but like, up. But if, if Andrew Luck tried to do this, it would be fake. But if Baker tried to be Luck and show up in the suit and tie, primp and proper, giving all the right polite answers, we would all see it as just disingenuous. Oh, yeah. I agree. I think he's crazy likable. Watching him dance you oh, know, he while he's the doing most, warm-ups. Is, is he the best slash most marketable quarterback that the Browns have had since they came back? Well, not just the Browns have had – I think he's that in the NFL. I don't. I don't know who's like, more marketable than him right now with how fun they are to watch. Because it ain't Rodgers, it ain't Brady, it ain't Ben, it's I mean, not Russell Wilson, it's not Breeze. 
I, I was going to say Goff and, and Patrick Mahomes, no. but well, like, Mahomes might be, but I don't know that Mahomes' personality, his personality isn't, isn't flashy. It is definitely near. ain't Golf, dude. No, Come Goff's, on. We, Goff's we gotta personality have a, is nothing. We got to have a different conversation. Yeah, no, you're, you're it's right. It's got to be that. him. No, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. That's that's nuts. Absolutely he's, nuts. He is incredible. He has changed that franchise. The, what scares me, he's going to lead the. He's going to lead to Greg with three G's getting the job. And I don't, we're going to get Mike Malarkey, and I'm going to be mad. But that'd be bad. I'm going to be mad. I mean, we'll see. We need one of these losses to kind of be bad. A couple of days ago, you were firmly stating that Greg Williams was not getting the well, job. Because they got thrashed. Um, God, what game was that? They, they got beat ugly bad after winning two The in a Texans. Row. Texans. And I was like, this is exactly what we needed. We yeah, had two good wins. Well, no, this was so on Sunday morning. Smashed. Sunday morning, you and I were talking about this. You're like, he's not getting the job. Not. I swear to you, he's not getting the job. And then two days later, you're like, oh god, he might get the job. My only problem is, <laughs> I, I keep hearing it said, but I keep hearing it being said from the same NFL writers, and none of them have any. All of them like, saying reports. that I think it's they all that, like, feel the, or think, and, and or, the players want him and all yeah. that. Yeah, and I, yeah. I don't know if that's true. Well, even if the players want him, John Dorsey don't care. That's a football man. He's going to make a football move. You got that right. All right, we'll close out the recap with uh, the Lamar Jackson and Joe Flacco mess. Lamar Jackson, 4-1 and one as a starter right now. Uh, none of this is passing football. <laughs> and nope. he's, he's been knocked out with, uh, with the concussion protocol twice. I hadn't had to miss the next week, either, like any of those times. Um, but now the Ravens came out and said that Joe Flacco is, is up. He's for sale. Yep. He's he is shipping out. Um, and now my guess is they are because of how much his contract is. No, they're no, no. probably going to have to waive him. Nope, that's not true either. So when he signed that contract, because I was actually looking into this the other day, when he signed that contract, it was crazy big. Yeah, I mean just disgustingly big. But every well, year the signing the, bonus was like massive. But every year the salary cap has gone up and up and up, and now that contract ain't that bad. I mean, he's like middle of the road. He's exactly where he is. He's middle of the road quarterback, middle of the road paid. The only guys making less than him are all the rookies. But but those are all rookie deals. So that's you can't judge them for it. Everybody that's got a free agent contract that's starting right now are all making more money than him. Okay. So it, it, unless unless they got their deal before him, like Andy Dalton's not. But Andy Dalton's deal was like two years before Flacco's. So like he naturally wouldn't because everybody got paid more and more and more. That makes um, sense. But now the contract's really not that bad, comparatively speaking. This is another thing, man. This is this was a good week for me in football. Other than my Patriots, just I'm, we're not get back in that. Um, <laughs> looking bad, uh, we'll, we'll say it that way. Uh, this was a really good week for me. I was before the season started. Made this claim. I think at some point in time, the front office and the head coaches are going to go to, to Flacco and say, you might want to pull something. I said that. If you go back yeah, you, and listen. You might, you might want to come up with you, an injury. You, you might want to pull something because we're going to go with the kid. And what happens? Flacco miraculously gets some hip injury. They doesn't have to have surgery for it. It's amazing. And this is after they have yep. lost, what, three in a row? Whatever. It's, it's amazing these guys get these pretty big injuries that take them out, but none of them have to have, ever have surgery. It's only when they suck, though. Now, when they're when they're playing great and they get hurt, they all need surgery the next day, and they have it like the second the, the you know the game's over with. Yeah, but no, no, we're gonna we're gonna rehab it. We're gonna work it out. Four games later, he's three and one, and now it's open and honest. Flacco's benched. Yep, he's so healthy. He's a, he's, he's a healthy scratch, not playing. Um, and and that's and that's it. I I think he was benched originally. I don't think he was ever really hurt. I think that was to save his ego. He won him a Super Bowl. But uh, because this is my problem. Well, that's been years ago. We're, we're having the same conversation with Cam Newton. And, well, he doesn't look right. He doesn't look good. He's got to be hurt. People are saying the same thing about Aaron Rodgers. Oh, he's not. he's got to be hurt. And that's Carson Wentz, who what? was Carson fine, Wentz. it yeah. looked like, until – he sucked Until for after four, the games, Dallas game. four games straight. He looked fine in the Dallas game. They, they put up some points. and, and then, They still got beat. And they still got beat. And then once they were... And they only put up points in the fourth quarter of that game. Yeah, but but even still, he was still yeah. there. He was still throwing the football. It, my, my problem is, is all these guys, all of a sudden, when they play bad, 
They got to be hurt. They got to be hurt. Why can't they just be bad? At some point in time, we're good at stuff, and then the defense catches up. You're allowed to to, to make bad plays. I mean, Tom looked bad Sunday. I don't think Tom's hurt. And, yeah, he's getting older, but he he's still able to make these throws. He just didn't make the throws. Yeah. That's all. Like, like it's okay to be bad. You don't have to fake an injury or, or, or coddle them by saying, oh, well, I think they're hurt. No, they're not. They're just, they're just playing like crap. Yeah. I think Flacco was playing like crap. He got benched. I, I, like I said about Wentz, as soon as Wentz went on the open market, if they were to sell him tomorrow, I think miraculously my back is feeling better. You're probably oh, right. Imagine that. I feel a lot better, and I can go work out and train and practice. Headed I, down to Jacksonville. I think he's embarrassed. And and he's supposed to be the franchise. He's supposed to be all these things. And he's playing like crap. And then Foles comes in, and Foles looks great. Well, what's the what's your excuse? I got to be hurt. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. All right, let's. Uh, that's that's going to wrap up the uh, the recap for for this week. Um, as always, tunicatravel dot com is the place to go to check out all of the sports books over at Tunica, Mississippi. Um, go to winningcureseverything dot com. We got all of our picks, previews, everything else, our recaps, everything you need to know, winningcureseverything.com.